my weather app says this is a light mist. Well, whatever it is, there's about two inches of it and I have no intentions of towing in it. When I first learned about the full-time RV lifestyle, it became a question of when, not if. But for someone that's not retired, that question of when can be a very difficult decision. Here's my story. Maybe it's because I'm Sagittarius, but I get bored with uh, domestic and mundane life. I got to explore. I got to see what's around the next corner. I want to see a different culture. I want to experience new things. And I immediately fell in love with living on the road. I fell in love with the gypsy lifestyle. And before you know it, I fell in love with a gypsy. Michelle was a vendor at the same trade shows, and she loved traveling as much as I did. We hit it off right away. For a couple years, I think we thought we were the coolest couple in the world, as if we were the only couple traveling together full-time. But then we discovered there were not only couples that traveled together full-time, but they took their homes with them. I mean, the idea that we could live on the road and take our home with us wherever we went, our own personal office, our own personal bathroom, kitchen, bedroom, it just blew our minds. We knew that had to be the next step in our journey. By the time we became serious RV dreamers, Michelle had become a self-made millionaire and I had switched careers. Michelle clearly had more expensive taste than me. She wanted that million dollar Prevost. I in the meantime couldn't care less. So while she was busy over the next few years trying to figure out a way to finance a million dollar rig through her Canadian corporation and write it off as a business expense, I in the meantime had enough cash in my pocket any one time as a poker player to uh, purchase an older RV. I just didn't know it. So what's the deal with this rambling river cat guy? Is he a full-time RVer or is he a, a, a degenerate poker player? Or is he, does he have a gambling problem? After my business suffered another debilitating blow, I transitioned quite quickly into poker. I made $30,000 my first two months playing poker and I didn't look back for four years. It fit quite nicely into our lifestyle because I could play it anywhere in the country, whether it be at a casino or a card room or online. I could easily see me lounging around in that RV playing poker online, but ultimately it just wasn't meant to be. My fifth year playing poker wasn't so kind to me and the mood swings began and Michelle just couldn't hang in there with me. Michelle left me the single parent of this wonderful Russian blue, and not once did she offer to send any child support. So was the RV dream over? Well, not for this guy. After years and years of traveling full-time, I moved to Reno and bought a camper. Isn't she just gorgeous? Okay, so it's a rescue, but so am I. Okay, so I did look at some other RVs in my price range that were in better condition, but this one just had the floor plan that I really, really liked. It had a little less floor space, but a little more shelf space, cabinet space, and storage. It also has the rare full bathroom in the rear, and what I really liked too was that there's sort of this uh, cubby where I can keep Jeepers kitty litter out of sight. It's definitely a fixer-upper, but it felt very cozy to me right away. Within one week of landing in Reno, I was already living in an RV and only a few hundred feet from perhaps the finest casino resort in the entire country. Pretty conveniently located for a poker player, wouldn't you say? Right across the street. I, and the really cool thing is I worked up my comps really easy here, so I was able to get free rooms every now and then, and I would sure take advantage of them. I'd actually drive Jeepers all the way across town to a sitter's and then come back, pack my suitcase, and walk across the street. My three-year plan in Reno was really quite simple, and I had the resources to do it. I had a very good paying job, and I could work as little as 20 hours a week and as much as 40 hours a week. I could easily save enough money to get back on the road and live comfortably. But you know what? I was nursing a broken heart. I felt like I lost everything. I lost Michelle. I lost the lifestyle that I love, and I could certainly right the ship a little bit, but I just felt lost. And that's exactly how I behaved. 
I gambled recklessly, I drank too much, and I dated mean women. And the only times I felt like myself and I felt somewhat happy was when I took trips. And I took lots of trips. It was during this trip that things really started to become very clear. I was just too restless in Reno. All I thought about while I was there was getting out of Reno. I had a good paying job, but I couldn't save any money because I never wanted to work. I was on the tail end of my three-year plan and I had nothing to show for my efforts. So what was I waiting for? If I can't save any money in Reno, I might as well just hit the road. I can deal poker on the road. Deep down, I knew what was holding me back. Michelle. I wanted her to come back into my life and, and join me on this journey that we had always planned together. But that wasn't going to happen. So I figured I better get my rear in gear and at least tow the camper one time before I go on the road. It was time for the maiden voyage. So after living in my camper for three years, I finally towed it. It's the first time I towed anything, so I went 70 miles up the road to Susanville, California. Overall, I'd say things went pretty well for a first-timer. I do have to make some adjustments to the sway bars and the tow mirrors, but other than that, everything went fine. Now, pretty much during my entire three years in Reno, I kept the holding tanks open. There are different philosophies on that, but that's what I did, and it seemed to work. So this would literally be the second time that I unscrewed the sewer cap, and I was in for a little bit of a surprise because I didn't know about seepage. This can happen when a little bit of toilet paper gets stuck in the valve and, and stuff just kind of seeps through. Uh, if you're not prepared for it, you can get splashed a little bit, and the first time it happens, it can be a little unsettling. Then you just realize it's no big deal, it's part of the RV experience, and shit happens. By the time I got back from Susanville, I was ready to go. I'd come to the realization that I was really more prepared than I actually thought I was. So what if I didn't accomplish exactly what I set out to do when I came to Reno? Happiness is more important, and there is actually one thing that I did right here. It's probably no coincidence that every time I stepped outside the door in Reno, it was self-sabotage. But every time I went to California or Oregon or played poker online, I made a lot of money. So in the confines of my RV playing poker online, I was making $40 an hour over quite a long time, and I built up a small fortune, almost $20,000. What was I waiting for? I could play poker anywhere in the country. I could play in Yosemite Park if I wanted to. I could deal poker events around the country, and I could play at casinos when they're available. Why was I wasting my time in Reno? Literally one day before I was going to give my notice at work, I got my answer. Nearly one decade after me and Michelle became RV dreamers, I'm going for it. I'm throwing caution to the wind, and I'm just going for it. Forget about that six-figure income I could have had if I had rebuilt my business again. That just wasn't 100% me. My heart wasn't in it. Never mind the six-figure income I could already be making in casino management on the way to a, a pension when I'm 65 years old. Again, perfectly capable, but I wouldn't be happy. And there's no guarantee I'll live till I'm 65 anyway. I'm taking a calculated risk here. I'm taking my specific skill set, my ability to play poker, and my ability to deal poker. And I'm hitting the road. It's where I belong. It's where my happiness lies. I'm going to take a shot. And that's my story. So my journey begins. My journey begins right here in Reno, Nevada. The snow has melted overnight, and I uh, check the weather reports. It uh, looks like the mountains are clear. And for the first time ever, I'm going to tow over the mountains, and uh, I'm heading to Redding, California.